In this video, we're going to focus on solving problems associated with the law of conservation of electric charge. Now, this particular law, the basic idea behind it is that the total charge in a closed system must remain constant. So let's use this example problem to illustrate that. Two metal spheres with charges of 74 and negative 36 microcoulombs are brought together into contact with each other for a short time. After separation, one of the metal spheres has a charge of 25 microcoulombs. What is the electric charge of the other metal sphere? So let's draw two pictures. We'll say this is charge one. Charge one initial, so that's before contact. And here's another metal sphere, we'll call it charge two initial. So charge one has a positive charge of 74 microcoulombs. And charge two, it's negatively charged and it's 36 microcoulombs. Now, after contact, we have the charge of one of the metal spheres. Let's say charge one. It really doesn't matter which one. So we'll call this Q1 final. And it has a charge of positive 25 microcoulombs. What is the charge of the other metal sphere after contact? What's Q2 final? Well, according to the law of conservation of electric charge, the total charge, Q initial, be before contact was made, must equal the total charge after the two metal spheres came into contact with each other. Since this is a closed system, there's no outside forces acting on this system. The total charge before and after contact must be the same. So the total charge before contact is the sum of Q1 initial and Q2 initial. The total charge after contact is the sum of Q1 final and Q2 final. So Q1 initial is positive 74, Q2 initial is negative 36, Q1 final is 25, and now we got to solve for Q2 final. 74 minus 36, that's 38. And if we subtract both sides by 25, 38 minus 25 is 13. So the charge, the electric charge on the other metal sphere is positive 13 microcoulombs. So if you add up 74 and negative 36, you get 38. That's the total charge before contact was made. And after 25 plus 13, that's also 38 microcoulombs. So this is the total charge in the closed system before and after. And as you can see, it doesn't change. And that's the basic idea behind the law of conservation of electric charge. The total electric charge in a closed system must remain contact. I mean, must remain constant before and after the spheres come in contact with each other. Now, here's a side question for you. How much electric charge was transferred? And from where was it transferred? What would you say? If you want to calculate the amount of electric charge that was transferred from one sphere to another sphere, you need to calculate the change in Q. So let's focus on the change in Q1. That is, it's Q1 final minus Q1 initial. Q1 final, that's positive 25 microcoulombs. Q1 initial, that's positive 74 microcoulombs. 
So if we subtract those two numbers, it gives us negative 49 microcoulombs. Now let's do the same thing for the other charge. So delta Q2 is going to be the difference between Q2 final and Q2 initial. So Q2 final, that's positive 13 microcoulombs minus Q2 initial, which is negative 36 microcoulombs. And here we have two negative signs, so this becomes positive. And so we're going to get positive 49 microcoulombs. Now this makes sense. If we add these two numbers, the total net change is going to be zero, which also agrees with the law of conservation of electric charge. In this case, Q1, it lost 49 microcoulombs of charge. Q2 gained 49 microcoulombs of charge. So during contact, one metal sphere, it gained positive electric charge, and the other metal sphere lost positive electric charge, thus keeping the overall net electric charge in this closed system the same. Now, what is the charge carrier here? Are we dealing with protons or electrons? What's being transferred? When dealing with metals, Electrons are free to move in metals. The protons, they're locked in place. They're fixed in the nucleus of the atoms. So it is the electrons that are being transferred when dealing with metal spheres. So what's going on here is that negative 49 microcoulombs of electric charge was transferred from Q2 to Q1. So Q1 gained negative 49 microcoulombs of charge in the sense that it gained electrons. Q2 lost negative electric charge, thus becoming more positive. Since it lost electrons, its electric charge will become more positive. It went from negative 36 to positive 13. Q1 gained electrons, so it became less positive and went from 74 to positive 25. But the total electric charge of the system is constant. Now for those of you who want access to more difficult problems associated with electric charge, Coulomb's law, electric fields, electric potential, and even electric potential energy and capacitors, feel free to check out the links in the description section below this video when you get a chance. But let's continue. Two identical metal spheres with charges of negative 20 microcoulombs and negative 90 microcoulombs are brought together into contact with each other. After separation, what is the electric charge of each metal sphere? So let's call this Q1 initial and Q2 initial. So in both cases, we're dealing with negative charges. The first one, it's negative 20 microcoulombs. The second one is negative 90. Now keep in mind, we're dealing with identical spheres. So this is going to be Q1 final and Q2 final. Now what we can do is we could start with the law of conservation of electric charge. The total charge before contact, Q initial, is going to equal the total charge after contact, Q final. So Q1 initial plus Q2 initial is going to equal Q1 final plus Q2 final. Now, here's what you need to understand with this problem. First, we're dealing with two identical metal spheres, which means that they have the same amount of surface area. So after contact, these electrons, they're going to distribute themselves evenly among the two metal spheres. 
So they're going to have the same charge after contact. So in other words, actually, let me just rewrite this here. Because they're going to have the same charge, Q1 final is going to equal to Q2 final. So we could just say they'll be equal to Q. So we can replace Q1 final with Q and Q2 final with Q. Or in other words, that's going to be Q plus Q, which is 2Q. So now let's solve for Q. So this is negative 20 plus negative 90. That equals 2Q. Negative 20 plus negative 90 is negative 110. And this is microclums. So now we just got to divide that by 2. Half of that is negative 55. So after contact, each of the two charges will have the same charge of negative 55 microcoulombs. So as we see in this example, if we add up these two numbers, we get a total electric charge of negative 110. And if we add up those two, it will be the same. So the net electric charge in this problem is conserved. But after separation, each identical metal sphere will have the same charge. So that's the important point of this problem. Consider the diagram shown below. The four identical metal spheres are brought into contact simultaneously. What is the net charge on the four spheres before separation? What would you say? Let's call this Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. So we want to find the net charge. You can also call that the total charge before separation. So we'll call it Q initial. This is going to be Q1 initial plus Q2 initial plus Q3 initial and then plus Q4 initial. So what we need to do is simply add up the numbers. We have positive 30 plus negative 12 plus positive 16 plus negative 14. 30 plus negative 12, that's 18. And 16 plus negative 14, that's positive 2. So it's 20. So Q initial, the total charge of the system before separation, but once they're brought into contact with each other, it's going to be 20 microcoulombs. Now this is going to be the same after separation as well, according to the law of conservation of electric charge. So before contact, after contact, or after separation, the total electric charge in a closed system will remain constant. So after these four charges have been brought into contact simultaneously, we know the total charge is going to be positive 20 microcoulombs. But what's going to be the charge on each metal sphere after separation? Now because we're dealing with identical metal spheres, they will have the same charge after separation. So all we need to do is take the total charge and divide it by 4. We're going to divide that charge equally among the four identical metal spheres. And I forgot the C in this word. So it's going to be 20 divided by 4. And so each charge will have a value of positive 5 microcoulombs. So if we were to draw a new picture, after the charges are separated, each of them will have a charge of 5, not microclooms, I take that back. This should be coulombs. If you add up 5 4 times, you get 5 times 4, which is 20. 
So that's it for this video. So now you know how to solve problems associated with the conservation of electric charge.